I'm Chloe with Brit & Co. Uh, hi, Lucy. I am so excited to talk to you today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time. Yes. Yes. I loved this movie, The Greatest Hits, so much, but I also have to say that I'm a huge ballet shoes fan, and my oh sister my... and I have watched Why Didn't They Ask Evans like 15 times. Oh my so God, I'm bless you. Thank excited. you. Two of my favorites. Thank you so yes. much. So I would love to start off by talking about how The Greatest Hits is obviously has so much music in it. Are you someone who listens to CDs, vinyls, or do you prefer streaming services? I think day to day, just for like practicality, I'm Spotify and streaming. Uh, but at home, I have a turntable. My dad got me this really cool red record player. So it's like my pride and joy. And he and I, my dad and I have always, like music has been the center of our relationship. Uh, so he's been giving me loads of his old vinyls since getting it. So, and, and I mean, the sound quality on vinyl is like nothing else. Like you hear the crunch of, like what it was supposed to be and like the sound in the room. So yeah, that's my like, that's where my heart is for the practicalities in Spotify. Are you listening to anything in particular right now? Um, a lot of Sam Cooke on both actually, on mm -hmm. vinyl, but then also Sam Cooke radio Spotify playlist is like my easy go-to. Yes, the movie also kind of got me thinking about the songs that like the first time I heard them related so deeply to something I was going through. Is there a song that you feel like was written for you the first time that you heard it? I mean, I remember, I think it's this, it's such a cliche, but obviously Dylan's lyrics throughout the history of his career have spoken to like young people and their like restlessness. Uh, and I remember always knowing that and enjoying his music aesthetically and then hearing the times they are changing when I was like in my late teens and in that like restlessness when you're like trying to be a full person, you feel like an adult, but you're obviously still so young and so in denial mm -hmm. of that. And I heard the lyrics to that and just felt so seen. And, it, and that the great unifier that music is where suddenly it's like, I have someone far more eloquent than myself articulating exactly how I feel. So it was like hearing mm -hmm. that song for the first time. And then I think since then I've become much more mindful of, of when that happens, like when something clicks into place. Yeah, absolutely. And the movie was totally giving, I know you've mentioned eternal sunshine of the spotless mind. And it also kind of reminded me of the fault in our stars, just in the sense of like the, the way that the characters connect and things like that. Were there any movies or performances that inspired you going into this process? I think, I mean, I was trying to watch as many like romancy films, like from rom-coms to like the really super sad ones. I think like crazy Drake Dramas' movie is a film I've always loved that's so much about yearning and a love that you can't always access tangibly. So it was films like that, straight up sad films like My Girl, I was going back to just to <laughs> maintain the ache in my heart uh, during filming. And then a lot of books as well. I remember I read The Year of Magical Thinking by Joan Didion, which uh, investigates grief in all its forms. Mm -hmm. And then this book, The Lesser Bohemians by this Irish author, Emma McBride, who's just the most poetic writer. And the first time I read it, I thought it was like the most beautiful relationship detailed in this book. I then went back to it for this film and realized it's like the most toxic relationship. Um, so it was great insight, but she does write about yearning and longing and the restlessness of love um, so well. So, so yeah, those were my resources. Yes. And throughout the movie, we see Harriet essentially trying to go back in time to save her late boyfriend. Um, are you someone who you think believes that fate always works things out the way that maybe things are supposed to, uh, for lack of a better phrase? Or do you think if you had the chance to go back in time, you would try to change something? It's so hard. I think it's such a temptation. I don't know how I would be able to resist if given the opportunity to go back. I don't know. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I don't know that it's fate so much as like relinquishing the power where it's like you don't know what the other road looked like. With the sliding doors, you don't mm -hmm. know what option B was. And yeah. something terrible could have happened. And or like you might not know the people that you know now. Um, and so I think as painful as things can have been... I don't know any other road and I would choose the safety of the road I, I know now and can learn from. Mm -hmm. So I'll try and choose that one, I think. 
Yes. Did this experience of, of doing this movie, Harriet is surrounded by books and records and, and obviously so much music. Um, and it feels like she's kind of steeped in the past. Did it mm. kind of make you think about moving forward in a different way? So much. I think I, I went into this knowing that I was, I'm such a nostalgic, sentimental person. And I never thought of mm -hmm. that really as a negative. I knew it was like, you know, better to live present and forward looking. But this job calls for you to be so in tune with your past and, and feelings and it's so useful when you can draw from your own experience. So I kind of kept one foot in the past deliberately and mm -hmm. I think seeing the way that that prohibits Harriet from being aware of what's happening in her present tense because you just miss opportunities. Mm -hmm. You just, something that could catch your eye if you're open to it won't happen if your peripheral is clouded by the past. And so I think yeah. I became much more mindful of being uh, in the present and open to possibility and just chance. And so, and that only happens, yeah, if you're, if you're in the room with yourself. Mm -hmm. And talking about nostalgia, et cetera, you were in Barbie last year, uh, which was such a fun discovery of Come mine, on. um, earlier. And I see on my screen, you have a pink background, which feels perfect. <laughs> but I was wondering if you had any, um, fun memories from that, Kate McKinnon weird Barbie set because that's arguably one of the best parts of the movie and I would just love to hear about your experience. Yeah it was wild I think just to kind of you know be in the room with those brains it's like undeniable uh Greta's brilliant but Kate McKinnon is a comedic genius I think so just like hearing her riff like hearing her improv line after line was heaven it was like being front row at snl or something so just yeah and that's the joy of being on any kind of set it's the experience in the moment so like yeah that was a comedy show that i loved yes and this cast for the greatest hits is incredible you mentioned kate mckinnon um do you have any dream future co-stars that you would love to collaborate with or any kind of collaborator oh man i would just love to be in anything written by michaela cole i think she's an extraordinary, completely unique voice um, mm. and just brilliant. So, yeah, anything penned by her. Um, I don't know. I think Andrea Riseborough is a really extraordinary actress. Britt Marling, you know, the list is extensive. But, yeah, Michaela Cole is someone whose work I'm always keeping an eye out for. Yes. And to wrap up, I have a few rapid fire questions that you could answer as short or as long as you might like. Um, I love seeing all the dates that David and Harriet go on. Do you have a perfect date or your most fun date? I think anything that's spontaneous, my best dates mm -hmm. and like my best memories have been days that have just like unraveled as you go along them. So yeah, spontaneity. And as much as I love dates, I also love having nothing to do. When was the last time you canceled plans? <laughs> uh, embarrassingly recently, I'm sure. I, I've been, I feel like this press tour has kept me in line and kept me in check with the schedule, but um, that'll probably be tomorrow. Yeah, I know I'm like a notorious list maker. I'm like, let me make sure I have everything mm -hmm. ready to go. I would also love to know, what is your onset must have? A book always mm -hmm. armed with a book. A book and mints, because mm -hmm. you're in really close proximity with people, so mints are a must-have, and then a book, because you're inevitably waiting around between set changes, scene changes, and everything, and it's always longer than you think it's gonna be, so <laughs> entertainment. Yes. What is on your summer 2024 bucket list? Oh, I don't say yes to more things, because like I'm, mm -hmm. I think especially in like a freelance job, it's really easy to want to keep uh, like the window open for any work that comes up or anything. And I'm trying yeah. to be better at just like taking the reins on my own life and saying yes to more opportunities with like friends and family. So honestly, just like a holiday. I'm going to go on holiday. Yes. I love that. And finally, we've talked so much about nostalgia. Is there anything particular you miss or think fondly of um, from the pre-smartphone era? Oh my God, yes. Not being cross-eyed <laughs> and glued to it. I think just like, I, I don't know, just that thing of like when you're waiting, when you're waiting for someone, just being mm -hmm. in your environment. And I know when you're, when you're young, that's for some reason humiliating to look like you're not doing anything. For some yeah. God knows why, but like that, when it was just like looking up and looking around, whereas like 
Mm. When I have a beat, I'm probably looking at my phone and that's just horrific. No, I feel that. <laughs> well, thank you so much for taking the time to chat with me. It thank was so you. nice to meet you, even if it was virtual. Likewise, thank you so much.